This is the video lecture on business organization. And in this video, we're going to talk about the different types of business organizations, talk about the different options, and also a little bit about the advantages and the disadvantages. Because none of these are actually perfect. They all have their ups and downs, and it's really up to the business itself to decide the best way to organize. So if you want an overview of business types, there are basically four main business types that we're going to talk about in this lecture. And the first type is the sole proprietorship. Then we're going to talk about the partnership, then limited partnership, and then finally corporation. So the first type of business is a sole proprietorship. This is a very popular and very common way to organize a business. And if you wanted to define a sole proprietorship, it's actually very simple and very easy to define. It is essentially a business with only one owner. That's really the key defining characteristic. And of course, like I said, it's a very common type of business. There are probably more sole proprietorships than any other type of business. And also, it's a very straightforward and very simple way to organize a business. So if you decide to organize a proprietorship, what are the advantages? Well, there's really two big advantages. And the first advantage is total control. As the sole proprietor, ultimately, you have the final say in all the decision making. And it's up to you if you would like to consult with other people and get their advice and listen to their suggestions, but ultimately you do have the final say, so you do have that total control. And then the other positive would have to do with profits. If the business is a success and if after paying out all your expenses it does turn a profit, you would actually get to keep all that profit for yourself as the sole proprietor. So both of those would be two tremendous advantages of that form of business. But at the same time, everything has its disadvantages, and a proprietorship definitely has several of those. First of all, you're limited in terms of financing. As the sole owner, you would be limited to just the money that you could come up with as an individual. So that's a limitation. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't have a successful business, but it does mean that it would be hard, at least initially, to uh, come up with a tremendous amount of financing. Also, limited ideas. Being the only owner, you know, you have certain experiences, you have certain ideas, but you could be somewhat limited in terms of the scope. Another big disadvantage would have to do with losses. And just like we spoke earlier about profits, if the sole proprietor receives all the profits, then it stands to reason that they would also be responsible for all the losses. So if some unfortunate reason happens to strike and you do actually lose money, you would be completely responsible for all those losses. And then that gets us down to the final disadvantage, which is perhaps the biggest and that is the fact that as a sole proprietor, you do face unlimited liability. And when you see that phrase, unlimited liability, the key word is liability. See, to be liable means to be responsible. So if you face unlimited liability, that means there is potentially no end to the extent to which you might be held responsible. And not only could you lose the business assets and the money that you've invested in the business, but there's potentially no end. You could even potentially lose personal property and personal assets as well. So that is a pretty tremendous disadvantage to the uh, proprietor form of business. Now moving on to another type, you also have the option of organizing as a partnership. Partnership, if you wanted a very clear and very simple definition, would simply be a business that has 
more than one owner. So it could be two, it could be 200, it doesn't really matter, but it is a situation of partnership with multiple owners, more than one. And just like a proprietorship, this is a pretty common form of business, a pretty common way to organize a business, but it is a little bit more complicated than a simple proprietorship. In terms of advantages, there are several. First of all, you would have the ability to finance. You would have the ability to raise more money because rather than being limited to just the money that you can come up with as an individual, you have all the partners who could potentially contribute money to the business. You also have more potential for ideas. You have multiple people involved and they have different ideas, different experiences that they could bring to the business. You also have the ability to divide losses. So rather than the situation as a proprietor where you would be responsible for all the losses in a partnership, everyone takes on their equal share of the losses. And then finally, the workload. A lot of people don't realize until they start a business what a tremendous amount of workload is involved. And of course, in a partnership, you have the ability to split that workload up among all the partners. So that can be a big advantage. In terms of disadvantage, though, there are several. And the first would be potential for disagreements. You know, you have different people involved, they have different experiences, different ideas, and along with that, they may have different opinions about how to run the company. So that could lead to disagreements, and it could even lead to some pretty difficult working conditions. Then on the other side of profit, we talked about loss. Well, if you get to split the loss among the partners, unfortunately, you have to split the profits among the partners. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage. Again, just like before with proprietorship, you do also face the unlimited liability. And then you also face a new disadvantage. And this is an advantage that you see many times with partnerships. This is called mutual agency. This is both an advantage and a disadvantage because in a partnership, all the partners have the authority to conduct business on behalf of the partnership. Well, that could be a good thing, but at the same time, it could be a disadvantage because the various partners could go out there and take on additional clients, go out there and make purchases, and make decisions that may not necessarily be in the best interest of the partnership. And because of that mutual agency, and the fact that all the partners have that authority to be an agent of the business, whatever decisions they make, you're stuck with it. So if they go out and purchase things, if they go out and take on additional clients, you know, if they do things that are beyond the capabilities of the partnership, you're going to be held accountable and held responsible. So that could be a problem potentially. Another option for organizing a business would be to organize as a limited partnership. And this is a variation on the classic partnership format. In this type of organization, you actually would have two different types of partners. You would still have the general partners, just like we talked about before on a partnership, but you would also have a new classification, and those would be the limited partners. Now these limited partners, they're going to be involved, they're going to contribute money, they're going to be somewhat involved in the decision making, and if we are profitable, they will certainly share in the profits. Then again, if we lose money, they'll have to take their share of the loss. But ultimately, the big advantage for the limited partner is that they only face limited liability. So they are held accountable but only in a very limited way. In fact, worst case scenario, a limited partner would only lose the business assets, the money that they have advanced and have provided to the business. 
their personal assets would actually be off limits. So that can be a very attractive way for someone to get involved with the business without taking such a huge risk. So that's another way to organize a business.